Hey guys, and welcome to this uh, very first side dish here on AmedioCompositions.com. Now, um, I'm making this side dish basically by coincidence because I discovered something that I thought I'd have to share with you because, um, yeah, I don't really know what's happening there. And it's just amazing because it solves one of the problems I've had so far. So, um, this is a scene I'm currently working on. Let me just go to your image editor this scene over here okay it's got a few lamps there and a few objects and then it's got this um water surface um on the bottom like in a uh, whatever water pipeline or something anyway um not that spectacular up to now but there's one thing i discovered that blew my mind okay so now let's go, now go to the uh to the render layer and you can see something we've got a few bright pixels over there and for those of you who've worked with uh, cycles before, um, you might know that um, cycles is kind of prone to fireflies. Okay, so it's um, it, it's it's a great render engine. You can see the result is looks at least to me pretty realistic without even having to do too much tweaking. But um, <clears throat> at this stage, it still has a few issues, especially with fireflies and also with dark pixels. But as you can see right now, there aren't really many dark pixels, or there actually there are no dark pixels at all. Only the bright ones, or the firefly, only the fireflies. But now look what happens here. I'm now going to the node editor, okay. And um, this is the final result. Let me just zoom out a little bit. No, this is not the final result. Yes, it is. Let me just see. Yeah. So this is the final result. Um, no, this is the final result. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. The thing is, um, the fireflies disappear at one point. As If I connect the color balance node over here to my viewer, then you can see those fireflies. They are there, definitely, over here as well, and also one over here. And um, usually you have to... Um, remove them manually. Now, as soon as you put in a hue correct, they disappear. As you can see, they're just gone. Now, I have no idea why that is, and hopefully one of you guys knows, because what's happening here is all the fireflies are being removed and replaced by dark pixels, okay? And, um, yeah, I, I just thought it's something to share because Usually, I like dark pixels more than bright pixels, because the bright pixels, they you immediately see them, okay? And the dark pixels, they are not so um, obvious, okay? Um, yeah, and here in the back where it's pretty dark, you cannot even see that there are, there are wrong pixels at all. Um, now, one other thing I might check just now is what happens if I just throw in a RGB curve and try the same thing. Okay, same effect. As soon as I throw in that node, you can see those um, bright pixels disappear as well. Um, okay, so it's not perfect, as you can see. You st still have the issues with, with the um, black pixels. But the good thing now is the following, as you can see over here. Um, let me just delete that. Let's just reconnect that to the... Let's just delete that as well. That was just a test to see if it was because of the settings in the hue correct, but it wasn't. It's just as soon as you throw in that node, it actually works. And now over here, you can see I've got an RGB curve that does nothing. Now, if I delete that with Control X, you can see the following happening. You can see um, everything goes wrong. And that is, I had quite a, quite some, quite a hard time figuring that out, but it's because over here, you can see you have those fireflies everywhere. Okay, and um, those fireflies, fireflies are basically pixels with an unbelievably high amount of energy, okay? It's not just like an energy of one, which would be okay, but it's an energy of a few hundred or thousands or whatever. And now what happens? If you blur them in just one direction, you can see you get that. Every, wherever there's such a bright pixel, I mean, it just gets dragged over the whole image, um, and each one of those pixels now has basically less energy than the previous pixel, okay? But since that previous pixel had so much energy, they still have way too much energy here. And now if I blur it in both directions, 
you can see the energy is still strong enough to um, make the whole screen white and therefore um, it doesn't work. However, if I now um, put in a RGB curve, which kind of like transforms those, which kind of like transforms those bright pixels into black pixels, um, then the black pixels, no matter how black they are, they cannot affect the outcome, and therefore eliminating uh, that problem as well. Okay, so now about the second part of the tutorial. Um, we, I, just, I just showed you how to get rid of, um, of fireflies, so to make them like dark pixels. But that doesn't really solve a problem, does it? Especially if you have an animation with lots of frames, then manually deleting or removing all the black pixels afterwards is still way too much work. So I came up with the technique to make Blender do that automatically and this way, at least as long as you have a moderate amount of black pixels, um, nobody will notice and you can render great animations. Okay, so now how does it work? Um, you can already see here in the example, there are no black pixels left, nowhere. All of them are gone, okay? And, and this is the node tree to achieve that, and we're just going to build that now from scratch. So let's just duplicate that viewer node, and let's select the viewer node. Let's reconnect that to there. And now let's connect our original render once again um, to the viewer node. Okay, and you can see all those white pixels again. Now, what we want to achieve is the following. We have no idea, or Blender has no idea, what kind of color is where that black pixel is. Um, um, yeah, Blender has no idea what kind of color there is. But Blender does know, or what color is around that pixel, okay? And I know that the color in this pixel is pretty much the exact same as the color right next to it. So what we're going to do, we're going to extract um, a path that just has the data where those pixels are, and then we are, according to that, those um, informations, we're going to uh, mix two images together um, so that those pixels disappear. Uh, it's a bit annoying to explain, so let me just show you. First of all, we are going to add in a less than node. Okay, so what? We, because what do you want to do? We want to take this this image, and we want to extract those pixels, and we do that because they are very very bright. We do that by using a greater than node, usually. Um, math greater than, okay. And about this node, you can see you have a top input and a lower input. And now what this does, um, it, it shows us everything that has a value of more than 0.5 in a black and white image, okay. And now we know that our bright pixels are certainly much brighter than those areas. So we're just going with a crazy value of, let's say, well, not crazy, but let's say with two. And the weird thing is now that those bright pixels don't appear, okay? We still have some things left from over here, but the bright pixels themselves, they're gone. And once again, I have no idea why that is, but I figured one thing out. If I add in a um, color, an invert node, okay? And then I go to less than, you can see it now works perfectly. Um, Okay, so now, unless you watch this video in 1080p, you probably don't see all those fireflies, but let me just zoom in as well as I can here. And now I guess you can see it, you can see them uh, down here. Um, okay, and now we use them as a factor amount, as the factor amount to mix um, um, the two images together. So let's add in a mix node and let's set it to mix as it is. And now let's take a look at what we're going to do. This is our original render once again. And now we want to take this original render um, as the top input of our mix node and then take that render again for the lower input. But with the translation node, let's just offset it by one pixel in the X or Y direction, doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, let's just do that. Let's just move that in up here. Then once again up there. And then for the top input, let's add in a translation node. 
the stored here translates. And let's set the y direction to one, uh, to one, one pixel. Now, um, you might probably ask yourself, why are we <coughs> manipulating the top input and not the lower input? And the reason is that this um, is an inverted image, by the way, okay? Usually you want it so that those pixels are white and the rest is black. But in this case, it's the other way around because uh, we, 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 we could invert that now, but it doesn't really mu make much sense. It's much easier this way and we can actually save one node. And now we're just basically mixing, we're, we're basically taking the lower input and then wherever this image is black, we are mixing the top input on over that, okay? And now you can see it doesn't work at all. And that is, once again, I'm not quite sure why that is, but I think it's because those pixels are so bright from those render layers that they cannot be overmixed in a way, okay? But as you might remember, um, if we add in a hue correct or a um, RGB curve, or maybe it also works with some other nodes, I didn't, not, didn't really test all of them. Let's just use the RGB curve and let's add in one on over here and one over here. And now those pixels become, instead of black, they become, uh, instead of white, they become black. And now it works. Um, as you can see, top input looks like this. Uh, let's go to a different pixel. You can see top input looks like this with the black pixel. The bottom input looks like this. Okay, you can see how the pixel is offset. And if we mix the lower input, and wherever there's a black pixel, we take the top input, then we get a, bla uh, a um, black pixel free image. And as you can see, that's the same result as we have over here. And yeah, um, I hope that helped some, some of you guys. I was pretty psyched now that I actually found that out finally, because now I can really make big animations with cycles without having to worry about fireflies. There is one limitation though, and that is um, this technique only works if the pixels around this black pixel have the same color as this black pixel is supposed to have, okay? Now, usually that is not a problem because no matter where we look in our scene, um, the pixel next to another pixel is never really that wrong, okay? Even here, even here you can see where we have this very sharp transition from black to white. Even here there is a, there is a, a transition because of the anti-aliasing and stuff. And therefore, even here it would work. Even if this pixel would be a, a white pixel, it wouldn't matter really, or, or a black pixel, and then it, it would still work out. Okay, so now I actually combined everything together. You can see here is our, our render layer. And then this node tree we just talked about with the, um, uh, what's called a location pass for the for the black pixels or the white pixels, however you want to look at it, with the, two, uh, with the lower input and the translated input. And then you have this. And as you might remember before, I had over here a, um, a problem just before the blur, because in the blur, everything became white because of this, those pixel strikes, okay? If you don't remember that, just go back in the video, um, then you can see it. But now, as you can see, there is no node in there, no RGB node, and it worked out. And that's because of this technique here, and now you can see everything is perfectly white pixel free. And yeah, this is my solution for fireflies and black pixels in cycles. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, if you have any further information on this, please post it in the comments. I don't know that much about it. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching and see you next time.